Hey, what is going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So we'll be taking a look at the plugin Trapcode Tal from RedGiant.com. It is a plugin, so it does not come with After Effects. You'll have to pick it up from Red Giant. But uh, this is kind of what we'll be creating in my first uh, Tau test here. And it's kind of just like a uh, 3D geometry to text transition. And just I did a little extra animation at the end to kind of show what this plugin can do. There's so much this plugin actually can do. This is just a quick video from, uh, you know, Trap Code Tau to text. And then just some further animation to kind of show off what this can do. But uh, we'll be, you know, there's a lot of uses for this uh, because it is a, uh, you know, a 3D geometry along a path. So that's really what's special about Tau. Uh, but for me, the best application I could use this for right now is, you know, uh, 3D geometry to text, and that's exactly what I'm going to show you guys. But understand, there are so many uses for this, and you need to just check out their demo reel on their website. But let's go ahead and just get started. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the text tool over here, and you know, you're going to type in your, you know, your uh, title. I'm just going to use the font Sunduck, and you can use any font you want. I just like the script font for what I was doing, and of course, we can like line this up. Properly, and we're gonna come over here. Make sure the text layer is selected, and we're gonna right-click our text, and we're gonna click on Create Mask from Text, and a new uh, solid layer appears, and we have all of our mask outlining our text, and we're gonna go ahead and rename this to Text Tau. So we're gonna go up to Effect Trap Code, and we're gonna add the Tau effect, and it starts off all crazy because we have all this text here. Usually, this is not how the effect starts, but this is how it starts off when you have mask. So if we come here to path from mask and if we just turn that off, uh, you can see we just have this ring here just because it's you know the normal uh, tau effect from the path generator. Of course we want to turn that off because we're not going for that. We're going from straight from the mask. So make sure enable pass from mask is enabled and we want to make sure use all mask is enabled as well. So and under this menu we have several you know parameters. We can rotate this beast. Uh, of course we can go to the taper size. And we can mess with the, you know, the path start. So if you kind of wanted this to, you know, come on just like, you know, from start to finish, you can always mess with the end path. You can always mess with the taper size, which is kind of like thin out the top or bottom areas, depending on what you're uh, messing with. And, but let's go ahead and make sure the taper size is uh, disabled. And I'm going to try to go through as many of these parameters as possible to show you guys how this plugin works. So under the segment menu, we have several options here under the segment mode. Of course, you should mess with these a little bit, kind of see what you can get. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it at the normal extrude and gone. And we wanna go ahead to the segments here and I'm gonna go ahead and type in 200. And this will basically be the amount of, I guess, detail within your uh, mesh here, your 3D geometry. And we go to the number of sides and this is really just gonna uh, increase that up by a little bit, maybe go to 50. And that's just going to make things a little bit more smooth, a little bit more, uh, you know, geometry in here. So let's go back to the size here and let's go ahead and lower the size to probably about 20. And this will, you know, we'll start to see our text a little bit more. And then we'll go to the size X and we'll definitely lower that down to probably about 30 or something. And as you see, we definitely get a better outline of our text and kind of what we're doing. Maybe we'll increase the size Y by just a lot. And I'll kind of like bevel it out a little bit. As you can see, if we undo that, you can kind of see more depth within the text here. And, you know, I think that's pretty interesting. I'll probably set that to around like 450-ish. Um, and then the size Z, we'll kind of keep that the same. We probably won't touch that at all. It looks good for where it's at. And then we'll go right into some of our texturing and kind of playing with how this is going to work. And then we'll get into some more interesting things. So let's go right into the lighting and material, or the material and lighting tab. And... Uh, let's go and go to the the image base lighting and let's set the built environment to you know maybe dark industrial and you should definitely see what those textures are going to do but uh, as you can see we, you know we get different sort of uh, you know textures to this I'll probably keep this at the sunset field for now because the other one didn't look so good but we will get right into this and let's go up to layer new light and just like trap code mirror, which I did a tutorial on the other day, this is going to uh, you know react to uh, After Effects lights without an issue. So if we hit P on our keyboard to bring up the position, we can kind of come here and move the light around and kind of see how it's going to you know react the light a little bit. As you can see, that looks pretty cool. And if we go back to Tau and we set the light fall off to distance squared, we're going to get more of a realistic sort of lighting setup. Um, as you can see, if we move this light away. You know, it's getting a little bit darker, a little bit quicker. So I think distance squared is a pretty cool, cool parameter to mess with. You know, I'd like to increase the specular to maybe like around 100. 
um, and that's going to you know take the highlight parts of the light and kind of make it brighter, and maybe uh, take the diffuse and you know increase that by just a touch as well, and then we'll probably go to like the Fresnel and just increase that just by a little bit, maybe like 10 or something. And you know, so far so good. Let's go ahead and open up the textures tab here. And if I go ahead and maybe drag in like a, you know, gradient like this, like one of my textures, let me go ahead and just, you know, put that underneath and hide it. Let's go back to, uh, you know, text how, and this is just a little extra. You don't have to do this. We already have a nice little texture here, but just showing you guys, if you go into the textures and go to the color texture and set it to your, like your texture that you bring into After Effects, you drop that on there, it's gonna change automatically to that. I'm just using this to kind of blend with our lighting and material with our uh, you know built-in environment, but I'm just showing you guys how this can work. You know, maybe we can set the reflection strength for the uh, image-based lighting to like you know 60 or something, and I'll kind of lower it down. And maybe we can go set that to the uh, dark industrial, and we'll see how that reacts with our new texture that we brought in. And maybe we'll come here and just move the light around. Maybe we'll duplicate the light over here. And you know, just really create an interesting lighting setup to kind of see what we're doing. And I did set this to dark industrial. That's what I wanted to do. And let's go right into say the rendering here. And we can really, you know, just like mirror, we have basically the same setting, just like mirror. And maybe we can set the shader to smooth and it'll kind of smooth things out a little bit. And we're we'll gonna come here to the draw. We're gonna set this to front fill black wire, but you know, if you have you have different settings in here. That you should definitely take a look at like points looks pretty cool but what keeps is that front fill black wire and we can increase the line size to maybe two or something you know just kind of mess with that and then one thing i do like is the ambient inclusion and if we really increase that to like maybe 80 ish I may mean, i have it at 70 you know we'll kind of even get darker shadows something a little bit more realistic for my taste and we'll set this super sample to uh 4x you can always set it higher depending on you know, your computing power, but a 4X works just fine for me. And then let's go right back into the really interesting stuff of this effect. So we'll take a look at the uh, fractal displacement, which is right here. Let's open that tab up and if we increase the amplitude. We're gonna get some crazy, uh, you know, interesting results from here. If we really increase it, you know, we're gonna get some very abstract, you know, object. And that's kind of what we're gonna do for this video. So let's go ahead and maybe you know, add a keyframe for amplitude. And let's go to like four seconds and let's set the amplitude to zero. And so therefore we'll have this, uh, you know, this 3D mesh kind of animating right into our text, which I think is really cool. And if we go back, say, to the beginning of our timeline here, we can play with the frequency. So the more we increase it, uh, you know, a little bit more interesting results that we're gonna get the, you know, the mesh gets even bigger. If we keep it, say, at like 20, uh, it's gonna, you know, just be a little bit more minimalistic back to our text. So that's something you should definitely experiment with. Um, but I'm gonna keep it probably around 250, 300, so somewhere around that range. And we zoom in here, or sorry, we move, scrub through our timeline to about four seconds. It'll still come together with our text, which is really awesome. And then, of course, we can take a look at the aux scale. Uh, there's definitely a few other settings in here. This will kind of just add more uh, detail to what's going on here. I think that looks really awesome. I, I don't know, this stuff looks really cool. It looks like we're just throwing a bunch of machine parts together and scrambling it up. Um, but you know, I'm gonna keep that probably around 2.5. And of course you have the complexity, which is gonna give you even more detail. It only goes up to 10, I think. So, uh, you know, as you can see, you can get really crazy with this. I'm just gonna keep it at two. And of course you have the offset, which is gonna, you know, just individually, you know, animate each of the X, Y, Z parameters. And evolution is always something you should, you know, think about animating as well, which is just an extra, uh, I guess you can consider another layer of amplitude in such a way. And maybe we can set the fractal type to a uh, smooth ridge. And of course, experiment with that as well. Now this is gonna get really big here. Um, so let's go back to the zero seconds here and set it to, you know, bring down the amplitude just by something that's a little bit more reasonable and maybe lower the frequency as well. But um, you know, definitely some different fractal types you can experiment with and see what you can get. And then let's go to offset here. And we take a look at uh, you know four seconds here. And if we animate, say, the offset position, uh, and you know, maybe we add a keyframe for offset, we'll say we'll go to like you know eight seconds or something. And if we animate the offset. And here's our RAM preview. As you can see, we kind of have this nice little stroke going around our text. 
Uh, I think that looks looks really awesome. If you create your own path, always experiment with the offset. You can really create some interesting looks with this. And so let's go back into the segments over here and let's start animating some of these, uh, you know, parameters. So maybe we'll go to like, I don't know, two seconds or something. And we will add a keyframe for the segments and also the size. And let's go to the beginning of our timeline here and let's set the segments to like say zero and also the size to zero as well. So now this will kind of, you know, animate on kind of almost like it's, uh, I don't know, forming together in a very abstract way. Uh, I don't know, I think it looks really awesome. And then let's go and animate the twist. So let's say we want to go to like our text has been up here for a little bit. And this is something I just experimented with. Add a keyframe for twist Z and go to like eight seconds. And let's just go ahead and increase the twist Z. And that's where you're going to really kind of get that, you know, text explosion. I don't know. I think it looks really cool. Just another uh, parameter for you guys to experiment with. There's so many possibilities with this uh, plugin. So now with that, all that created, this is also a 3D effect. So we can go up to layer new camera and 50 millimeters is just fine. And we can go ahead and grab the Orbit uh, camera tool. And let's say, open up the camera here, go to the transform, go to the beginning, add a, you know, keyframe for our point of interest and position. Let's move that forward to like, you know, four seconds. And let's just go here and just kind of, we can kind of animate around our, you know, our mesh here or our geometry. Maybe I'll take these keyframes to the beginning. And then now we kind of just have, you know, this 3D uh, camera revolution around our uh, text. And, you know, looks really awesome. Maybe make the last two keyframes easy as by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And with that said, we'll go ahead and render this out. And after our render, this is what we have. And it looks really awesome, you know, creating 3D geometry for your text or anything on a path is really awesome. This plugin really allows you to do so many things. Um, of course, I'll probably post more videos on this effect, but in the meantime, if you guys enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe to this channel for more After Effects tutorials. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks and those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day. Thank you.